Hello everyone, this is Anton Amir, Assistant Professor in Computer Science from St. Joseph's College, Hosur. In this video, we'll be seeing about functions in Python. Functions, they are a set of statements that is going to perform a particular task and it is going to give back some value. So if you're having large blocks of code that you can neatly split it up into manageable chunks means if you want to uh, make it a subtask there is a bigger task you are going to split it up into subtask you are going to find a solution for the subtask which is going to result as a solution to the bigger task so that can be done through functions and functions can appear in three ways declaration and definition there is an example def is a keyword that tells you that you are beginning a function and after that comes the function name so here the function name is foo and after that, we have the parenthesis where you will be having your parameters or arguments. Then colon tells that you are beginning a block. So after colon, when you move on to the next line, you should give one tab space. That is four spaces together. So it denotes the uh, content inside the block. So here inside the block, we are just giving print and we are printing a string. The name is bar. The second one is function object or reference. So here the function object is going to be the function name itself that is FOO. And then we have we are having the function call or invocation means we are going to call the function. So the name of the function if it is having any uh, parameters that value also we will have to pass. So here our function foo is not having any parameters. So directly we are just giving the function name along with the parenthesis. So how to create a function. So def is a statement that denotes that you are creating a function. So the syntax is given here. You can see def and the function name. Def denotes the beginning of the function. So after that, you'll be giving a function name and within brackets, we'll be passing values to the function that it is called as parameters or arguments, anything. So and then we are having a colon telling us we are beginning a block. So from this def keyword till the block you can see we'll be giving one tab space that is four spaces to denote the content inside the block. So here function documentation string function body suit. So till wherever we are giving this four spaces it is called as function body. So see the example def greet name print we are printing hello and the name that we are going to enter. So this is the function. The function cannot execute alone. So we need to call the function. So in other programming languages, we'll be having a main function where from where we will link all other functions together so it will get executed. So here uh, in Python, there is no specific main function, but we are not going to give the name main function, but we we'll also have to call the function from somewhere. So outside the function, we are calling it. So here the name of the function is greet. So from here, we are giving greet Alice. So this Alice is the value that we are going to pass to this variable that is parameter name. So here the name is going to accept this value Alice. So now inside the print statement, if you see within double quotes, hello is given. So hello will be printed then name. So this is the parameter. So here this value will be substituted. The value is nothing but Alice. So hello Alice will be printed. So there is no uh, specific difference between declaration and definition in Python. Both are same. So both are going to start with the same keyword DEF. So it is like declaration and definition together. So next one is forward reference. So even before you create a function, you can call the function. So that is only called as forward reference. Let's see an example for that. DEF function. So then this is the name of the function. Return add numbers of 3 comma 4. So here add numbers is a function that we have not declared or defined previously. But if you see in the next line, we are defining the add numbers function. So this is called as forward reference. So here this is a first function. The name of the function is FUNC and there is a second function. The name of the function is add numbers. So def add numbers a comma b. So inside the function, the inside the function only one line is there return a plus b. So from where the execution will start is from here only the execution will start. The result is equal to function of. So from here the control will call the function FUNC. Okay, so here what we are going to do return add numbers of 3 comma 4. So from here this add numbers function will be called. So this 3 will be passed on to A and 4 will be passed on to B. 
So A value is going to be 3 and B value is going to be 4. So 3 plus 4 is 7. So it will return 3 plus 4, 7 to here, F U N C, this function. So again, this function is also returning the value. So where it will return is from where it was called. So from here only it was called. So this function, what it is returning, it is returning 3 plus 4, that is 7. So that return value is going to be stored in the variable result. So in the next line, print result is given. So this result will print 7. So next one is function attributes. We can add attributes to the functions at runtime, but those attributes must be added inside the function itself. So let's see an example. Def greet of name. So we are having one parameter inside the function greet that is called as name. So print hello name. So next one greet dot message. So we are adding another attribute called as message inside the function, which we have not already created. So greet dot message welcome to the program. So now outside the function, we are calling greet user. So this will print greet and uh, sorry, uh, this will print hello and the name that is user. Hello user. So next one, if you say print greet dot message, it is going to print welcome to the program. So next one is inner or nested functions. When one function is created inside another function, it is called as nested function. So here we are having two functions, outer function and inner function. So this is the outer function and this is the inner function. You can see there is one tab space here. And again, this is the body of the function. It is having one tab space. So inner function will return x plus y. And this return inner function will go and return the value to the outer function x. So result is equal to outer function of 10 comma 5 we are calling. So one value will be passed here and other value will be passed here. 10 plus 5 is going to print 15 as a result. Next is function and method decorators. Method decorators are just like the overlays which are going to be placed on your function calls. It will be placed on the top. So these overlays are like just uh, additional calls whenever that is going to be used when the function is going to be declared. So you can see the example df my decorator of function and uh, one more thing the uh, decorator uses the at symbol in front of it. So uh, def my decorator of function we are creating another inner function wrapper inside that we are printing again we are calling another function then again we are printing one value and returning the wrapper. So here we are going to create the decorator at my decorator of def say hello we are going to print hello. So and we are calling the functions hello. So from here already it will start its execution. So here my decorator uh, method will be the function will be called. So this is another example of decorator. Def hello decorator of we are passing one parameter and the parameter is called as function. Def wrapper we are this is another function in a function. Print hello before the function call. Then we are calling the function print hello after the function call and we are returning the wrapper. So now we are going to create the decorator. Uh, we are going to call the decorator at hello decorator def my function print inside my function. So all the functions we have created. So now we are going to execute it. So first we are calling my function. So from here the my function will be called. Okay, so my function starts with hello decorator. So it will go to the hello decorator. What is there inside the hello decorator is this one hello before function call that will be printed. Then from here we are calling the function. So it will go and call the function and print inside my function. And again from here it will come back here and print hello after the function call. Return wrapper so it will stop. So next is function operator the parenthesis the round brackets that is only the function operator. So inside that only we will be passing values to the function. Those are called as parameters or arguments. So next one is keyword arguments. So let's see an example directly. Def greet of name comma age. So we are passing two parameters. One is name and other one is age. Two parameters are there. Print hello name you are age years old. So the parameters are here name and age. So now we are going outside the function to call it. So here we are calling greet age is equal to 25 name is equal to Alice. So here if you see. Here the first parameter is name and the second parameter is age. But when we are calling it, we are calling it as second parameter we are calling first and the first parameter we are calling second. So when you use keyword arguments, there is no specific order for passing values to the arguments. But when you don't use keyword arguments, in what order the arguments are there, in the same order we will have to pass the value. 
So that is one advantage of keyword arguments. So here age is equal to 25, name is equal to Alice. This will be substituted. So Alice will be substituted here. This 25 will be substituted here. So hello Alice, you are 25 years old will be printed. So next one is default arguments. So if by default, if you want to pass any value to a function that we can do, the same example, def greet name comma age is equal to 30. So here print hello name, you are eight years old. So first, uh, now we are coming outside the function to call it greet Bob. Here it is having two parameters, one and two. But here we are passing only one value. So what will happen? The second parameter will take the default value that is 30. So the output will be hello Bob, you are 30 years old will be the output. So next if you see greet Alice comma 28. So two parameters, two values. So now it will not take this default value. It will take this 28 value only. So the output will be hello Alice, you are 28 years old. So next one is grouped arguments. So you can also combine arguments. So if we can, uh, that is done using these operators, single asterisk and double asterisk. Single asterisk passes the arguments while double asterisk takes the keyword arguments. So let's see the example, def print info of arguments and keyword arguments is taken. Print positional arguments, we are going to print the count of it and print keyword arguments, we are going to print it. So now coming outside the function, we are giving print info of 1, 2, 3. So these are positional arguments. So this args will take these three values. Next keyword arguments here, name Alice, age 25 are keyword arguments. So this is another example. Def print person info, name, age is equal to 30, hobbies, additional info. Then we'll be printing the name and age. If hobbies are there, then we will print the hobbies. And if additional info is given, then we are going to print it using a for loop. So for key comma value in additional info, because we don't know what additional info will be given. So we have to take the variable that we are there passing as well as its value. That is why we are taking it in a, inside a dictionary, key and value. So now we are going to call this function. So the first example if, for calling here, if you see print person info, name is equal to Alice. So here name will be substituted as Alice. Age is equal to 25. So this 30 won't be taken. Age 25 will be taken. Hobby 1 is reading and hobby 2 is traveling. So here if hobbies, it uh, join hobby. So it will go inside that. So name, name will be Alice. Age is 25. Hobby 1 is reading, hobby 2 is traveling. So that is how the first info will be stored. Now see the second example. Print person info. We are just directly giving Bob. Next we are having hobby 1 is playing guitar, hobby 2 is hiking. So this will come under if hobbies. The next if you see location is equal to New York. So this is the additional info. So location will be taken as a key. And value is going to be New York. So this is how the second value will be stored. So these are a few questions for you people to know how much you have understood from this video. Thank you.